Hey guys, welcome back. Happy New Year. Hope, uh, hope everything's going well for you guys. So this video is about a uh, my venture back into 35mm film. Back when I was 17, 18, 19, 20, I used to shoot a lot of film. I had a Ricoh 35mm uh, film camera. And I would shoot a lot of surfing, a lot of skateboarding, things of that nature. And process my own film, do everything at school when I was still going to school. And it was, it was just a really cool experience. And I haven't really done that in about 30 years, maybe 40 years. Um, recently I picked up the brand new M6, Leica M6. Uh, I was able to get a new one. I was going to buy a used one. And I said if I find a new one, I'm going to get it because I've heard that Leicas are a nightmare when they break. And sometimes they're gone for six, seven, eight, nine months. Um, so I promised myself that if, if I was able to find the new Leica M6, I would buy it. So right at the last minute I was getting ready to buy a used one and um, I was able to find this camera. It was the only one they had in stock. It was a film film store out of Missouri, somewhere in Missouri. But um, I ordered it and I got it right before Thanksgiving. So what I did was I, I shot two or three different film stocks and I'm going to run you through those stocks, show you how the photos turned out. Um, never shot with this camera before. I was using the meter that comes inside the camera and I trusted the meter so you know, I'll show you I'll show you how those shots turned out and um, I've already shot another maybe eight or nine rolls of film and I'll be heading to Iceland here in a couple of weeks so I'm taking the trusty old Leica with me and we'll you know hopefully the, the pictures will turn out like I want them to so sit back relax like I said this is just uh, this is just a test of some film rolls through this new camera and I just wanted some of you that were thinking about maybe purchasing it or even getting an old M6 just to kind of show you the quality that you can get out of this camera. So, enjoy. Thank you for watching. Once again, I want to thank you for watching this video. So the first film I put through it was Ilford HP5. Uh, the ISO was at 400. And I shot this at the Southeast Circuit Finals of the PRCA Rodeo Weekend. Um, I was there on assignment and I decided to bring the film camera with me. So as the competitors were checking in, um, I grabbed just various various people to see if they would mind me snapping a photo of them real quick. Um, like I said, I was using the meter that was inside the camera. So the, this camera has a meter, a light meter that is a spot meter. Um, it has an arrow that faces to the right, an arrow that faces to the left, and then a center button that lets you know that your exposure is correct. So you have to kind of spin the, uh, the aperture on the lens to you know, get the right, the right exposure. So what I did was I, I used the meter that was in the camera um, sometimes it's centered on the light that was coming in. This, these outside, um, it's an outside arena, but it has a, an overview, like an over, uh, what do you call it, like a roof on it. And it spills in a lot of light onto the, onto the floor. So you'll see a little bit of overexposure here or underexposure here, just depending on where the meter hit on the light. Um, but overall, I was pretty happy with this film. The film stock seemed to work pretty good. Um, I did do just a little bit of touch up on some of the photos. There was a little bit of extra grain on some of the darker shots. Um, but on, on some of the face shots, it turned out really clean. It was really pleasing. Um, like I said, I haven't shot black and white in forever. So it was an experience for me. Um, next time I think I'm gonna bring a light meter with me just so I can get a better reading on you know, people's faces or the backgrounds, things of that nature. But with black and white film, you kind of you know, there's there's got to be sort of a lot of contrast there to make the image, to make the image really pop. Um, like I said, I appreciate all the people from the rodeo that allowed me to take their pictures. Um, this was all shot with a 28 millimeter lens, and in the Leica viewfinder, you know, the rangefinder finder, there's two sets of I don't know, I'll call them frames. So when you put a when you put a lens on, there's two sets of frames. One is for the lens that you're shooting, and one is for a different lens. So it took me a while to get my framing right before I realized where I had to be on these on these particular shots with this particular lens. So overall, I was happy with the happy with the film. Um, the same day, I shot some color film. I shot Kodak Ultramax uh, 400 with the same Voigtlander lens, 2.8, and um, these shots turned out. You know, the arena was red, so there was a little bit of red in the photos. You can see it. Um, I couldn't get as sharp as I wanted to get on some of these shots because I did not bring a light, I did not bring a flash, I was just using natural light. And that was the purpose of this, just to see what the film would do, to see what the camera would do. Um, overall, I was pretty happy with most of the images. Like I said, these were a lot of competitors, it just, I didn't even know them. I just said, hey bud, can I, can I grab a photo real quick? And they were all pretty accommodating, everybody said yes. There was a couple of times uh, when I was taking 
these photos that I forgot to take the lens cap off. None of these happened back to back. These were all, you know, 20, 30 minutes apart as the, as the competitors were arriving. But there was a couple times, I think there was like seven frames out of the 36 that I ruined because I didn't take the viewfinder off the lens. I was so hyped up to get him into a position or to put him into, you know, a certain area for a certain look that when I looked through the rangefinder, everything looked perfect, just like shooting through a DSLR. But, um, yeah, I messed up a couple of the couple of the photos, so I got to talk to those guys and let them know they didn't turn out. But um, for the most part, you know, this film stock is a lower, it's a cheaper end film, I guess. It's, it's less expensive than some of the other higher end films. And um, like I said, I was just playing. Um, had these all developed at Colonial Photo and Hobby here in Orlando where I live. And, um, you know, they said, they said they turned out pretty well. So I'm pretty happy overall. Um, some of these shots, you know, in the middle of the arena, the lighting, it was so backlit that I had to actually bring up the faces in Photoshop, you know, just lighten them up a little bit and then add a little bit of contrast just so I could, you know, show off the people's faces the way they, they should be shown. But, you know, it's a learning it's a learning phase when I get back into film. I just I just wanted to start playing again and, you know, unfortunately I, I know I'm gonna ruin a lot of images. I'm gonna probably mess up a lot, but it's part of it, you know. I'm back to being an amateur on the film side of it. You know, digital I'll shoot all day, but you know, film is just a different beast. Um, the next one was Kodak Portrait 800. Now I shot this up at my buddy's hunting camp. Um, I was playing around a little bit. Once again, it was all natural lighting. A lot of the stuff inside um, turned out, but it was really dark. You know, you got to really overexpose this stuff to make it to make it click. And once again, you know, I'm not. Some of these some of these pictures are fine, but for the most part, not a, not a lot of them are great. Um, they were a lot darker than what I thought they would be, so I recently purchased a flash. It's a Lux Junior. I'm going to give that a shot, uh, see if I can, you know, add some brightness to some of these shots. This image, these images here are from a school that I work at. This is the girls' basketball game. Once again, it was just whatever light was in the arena, and, um, you know, I was, just, I was just playing, just trying to get some different shots. Um, you know, overall, I'm okay with it. It's not bright like a digital camera, but at the same time, it doesn't have that feel of a digital camera. Um, this is in the school's theater program. I just happened to be doing a little bit of a video shoot in there for them, and I brought the camera with me. Uh, this is 800 under you know pretty extreme lighting conditions, but it's kind of artsy. Some people love it. Some people might not like it. I'm not a big fan. I don't think it looks that great. But once again, I was just learning. Uh, back to HP, the Alfred HP 5 Plus. This was a shopping mall that I used to go, you know, back in the 80s. I used to, this, this mall was super popular. It's called Fashion Square, and it's in Orlando, Florida. Um, it's still open, believe it or not, but as you can tell, this was right around Christmas time, and it was just dead. It was, you know, I don't know. But um, I figured I'd give this film stock a shot, you know, see how it turned out. It has a, has a lot of contrast. It reminds me of when I was up in New York a couple weeks ago. Um, I do like the look. It's a little bit more of an architectural type portrait or, you know, landscape type shots, if you would. But would have been nice to have some people in there and have some action. But, you know, this is dying. Amazon is here. Everybody buys stuff on Amazon. Everybody gets stuff shipped to their house. And nobody really seems to go to these places anymore unless they're going to Spencer's, obviously. But, um, I don't know. I, th I just think it's pretty sad. These walls here, I used to skateboard on. These, we used to do quarter pipe uh, tricks and you know Tony Hawk type things before security kicked us out and run us off. Um, then we moved into the to skate park stuff. So happened to go by the Orlando skate park. There wasn't a lot going on. Um, it's kind of a nostalgic feel for me. This is the the lifestyle that I grew up with. I wish I would have had this when I was 18, 19, 20 years old. Uh, here we are, 40 years later, and uh, you know these kids are tearing it up. I do like the look. The black and white seems to look pretty good. Um, the last image of the series is the uh, Orlando Sentinel building. It used to be a big newspaper in downtown Orlando and everything's gone digital now. So now I'm just kind of shooting a little bit of nostalgia if, I, if you would. Um, first time ever shooting Ilford Delta 3200 and this is a super grainy, grainy film. I shot this for the Jake Paul fight here a couple weeks ago. Um, kind of under contract to do some of his work so that makes it fun. Um, this was just natural light, whatever I could get. Um, a buddy of mine Told me to maybe shoot some 3200, um, give it a shot. He told me the settings to do, and um, I tried it. Unfortunately, I was with the with the 28, which obviously is going to let in a little bit more light. But 
it's not getting me in tight on the action like I'm used to. So, um, you know, it's, it's, this was, for me, it was kind of disappointing to shoot this stuff. I wish I would have been a little bit tighter. Um, every single boxing match had different lighting set up. Some was a little bit yellower, some was a little bit whiter, some was a little bit bluer. So, obviously, with black and white, you can't see the difference, but, um, you know, it's, it's super grainy. It kind of gives you that crunchy feel, if you would. It is, you know, it's a fight. It's a sport. It's supposed to be rough and tumble, not super sharp, not super clean. Um, a lot of people use this film for, you know, rock concerts, for grungy stuff outside, and maybe some crunchy clothing type advertisements, if you would. Um, once again, you know, shooting with a rangefinder is very difficult and stuff like this. I, I do like shooting with a rangefinder. I've obviously grown up shooting DSLRs for all this stuff for the past 30, 30 years. I do, I've done a lot of huge fights. I've been all over the country. Um, this is like my back backyard. So I was shooting on assignment, like I said, with a D DSLR for this. And every now and then I would just bring the, the M6 up to my face and see what the Leica could do. Um, you know, I don't, I can't say I'm in love with this film. Um, it's just a little bit too grainy for me. So I might shoot it next time at a different, you know, a different rating. Some people say try it at 1600, you know, it's, a, I don't know. I just got to play with it. Um, here's old Vivek Ramaswamy. He was there. He's, I guess he's a really good friend of Jake Paul's and those two hang out quite a bit. He happened to be there and was sitting right behind me. So of course I had to snap a quick pic of him real quick. But for the most part, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know whether to recommend the 3200 or not. Um, you know, give it a shot. See if you like it. It's all personal preference at this point. Like I said, maybe if I was to use a different lens, it would probably look a little bit cleaner. Um, but I don't know. Less light. Yeah. Forgot I shot this much. But anyways, uh, the next one was Cine Still 400D. I shot this in New York City. Uh, my son was up in Carnegie Hall singing right before Christmas. And I popped this into the camera to see what it could do and just walked around, you know, basically street photography type. I really didn't get in anybody's faces because I'm not, you know, I'm still not used to the 28 yet. You've got to get really, really, really close to do that. So I just kind of let the light meter do its thing. Um, I did adjust every now and then, tried to make it, you know, centered. I probably should have exposed some of these shots. They do seem to be pretty dark, especially with all the, the big neon signs and the bright, you know, the bright blue and white sky. I don't know. Um, this film reminds me back of when I was in the 80s, 90s, uh, when I first started shooting film. It's got a lot of a lot of bright contrast, a lot of saturation, but it does seem a little bit rough. It's not super sharp. Um, everybody, you know, swears by this film. I, it's the first time I've shot it, so. I'm just learning at this point. Um, since I did shoot this stuff, I've bought a what I get a 35 millimeter lens and a 50 millimeter lens. So I'm definitely going to give those a shot next time and get a little bit tighter on some stuff. I did buy the Lux, the little pop flash, so I'm probably going to use that the next time. Um, you know, this was almost two months ago, and I've I've gone above and beyond where I was here. You know, as far as shooting film. I've got six rolls in there right now, getting developed. I'm waiting for the processing to get back on those and the scans, and I'll do another another review of that film as soon as I get a chance, and you know, give you guys an update, tell you where I'm at. I um, love shooting in New York City. I go up there at least once a once a month. My fiance lives up there right now, um, so every chance I get, I'll, I get to go. I'll, I'll definitely go. So, um, if you guys got any, you know, ideas or options, or you know, can give me some tips on what I might be doing wrong here, or what you enjoyed. Definitely leave it down below in the comments. Um, I am going to start posting a little bit more. Things have just been hectic, really busy here. Um, but I, I, I just, you know, I'll shoot every chance I get. And get a process every chance I get. I'll keep you guys posted on, you know, how the M6 goes for me. And that's pretty much all I can do at this point. So, you know, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, come on back in about a month or so. Thank you.